Hi again. So in this video we're going to find all the zeros for a couple different types of functions. So I have one here that is a polynomial degree 3. So already we know a little bit about the graph. We know from the fact that it's a positive um, x to the third how it ends. This would, this would, would um, end by rising. This would rise to the right. Okay. So now we're going to find all the possible zeros. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is really to be able to find one good zero, one rational zero. So we take this, okay, as you read through the book, you're going to see that you can find a list of possible zeros. These are just possibilities that we then have to test. If you take factors of the constant, which is the negative 21, over factors of the leading term. Okay, that's where I'm getting that from. So in this case, my possible um, rational zeros would be, okay, factors of 21, well, it could be plus or minus 1 goes into there, plus or minus 3 factors into 21, plus or minus 7, or plus or minus 21. Those are all factors of 21. Okay, on the bottom, this is a nice kind of easy one because I just have a 1 as my leading term, so the only thing there is plus or minus 1. Okay, so really... If this were anything other than 1 on a denominator, I would divide it into each one of those numbers. But because it's just a 1, here is my list right there of possible factors. So my second step is I now need to test these. Okay, I've got to, as long as I can find one good one, I'm set. Okay, so I just really start. This is kind of the tedious part where you've got to, you can use the graphing calculator and test to see which one's, it crosses the um, x-axis, but I'm going to do it algebraically. So I'm going to start and I'm going to see, okay, let's see if 1 is a factor. Okay, I'm going to use some synthetic division. It, I, these are pretty fast. I'm going to see if 1 divides evenly in there. Okay, so I bring down my 1. I multiply, I add, I multiply, I add, I multiply. And I add, and I get negative 32. doesn't even matter to me what that number is unless it's a 0. Okay, so this one doesn't go in. Okay, this is not going to work. That means I'm going to cross off 1 from my list. All right, so I did this ahead of time. Um, so I did find 1, and I found the 1 to go in to be negative 3. So let me show you. But you would have to just kind of start. You might probably go on to negative 1 next and then go on to the 3. But let me show you how the 3 works, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to multiply. Whoops. Yep, multiply, then I'm going to add. I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to add. I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to add. So I get a zero. Okay, so that means I'm going to slide this up a little bit. That means that right now my function can be written as x minus x plus 3, sorry. Because if, if I tested a negative 3, it means x plus 3 is a factor. And then here it gives me my remaining, my quotient. So that means x squared minus 2x minus 7. Okay, so I'm gonna re I'm gonna bring this over to my next slide. Okay, so so far what we know is since we found that factor of x plus 3 to go in, um, it was x squared minus 2x minus 7. We know one zero, okay? I'm going to come down to the bottom. We know our zeros are at x equals negative 3, and we know there must be two more. They may be real, they may be imaginary, but there should be two more since this is a cubic. So then I turn my focus to this right here. Okay, and I try to keep going with that, either by factoring or quadratic formula if they don't factor. Okay, so if I try to factor x squared minus 2x minus 7, it's not going to work. If you do do the quadratic formula on just that part, we already know the x plus 3, how to solve that one. So if I do the quadratic formula on this one, I already did it, and I if you try it, you end up getting... Um, x equals 1 plus or minus 2 radical 2. Okay, that's all done and that's all simplified. So you can go and test that on your own. So these right here, um, so one 
zero comes from setting this equal to zero. If I set x plus three equal to zero, I get my x equals negative three. So that's one um, possible, that's one actual zero. And I get two more from the quadratic formula. So I do have three, in this case I have three real roots. Okay, so that means that this graph crosses the x-axis three times because I got all three roots to be real. So my actual zeros are a negative three, one plus two radical two, and one minus two radical two. Those are my actual zeros for that function, which translate to the x-intercepts. Okay, so let's look at another one. Okay, similar type, okay, another cubic. So again, we can kind of say what it looks like right off before we even start, we know that this is going to rise to the right because I have a positive x to the third. So let's get right in with our possible zeros and we'll find one and see what we can do. So our possible zeros are factors of 12 or negative 12 and then factors of 1. Okay, so my factors, so this would give me a list of, all right, so 12 has got a few. We've got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. All those things are factors of 12. Okay, and then the bottom is a nice plus or minus 1 that works to our advantage because I don't really have to divide in. So I've got to start just testing some values. Okay, so just for sake of time in the video, okay, my next step is to test values um, using synthetic division to see which one you can find to work that goes in with remainder of 0. I already tested and found um, x equals negative 2 to work. Okay, so I'll show that on the next slide. Okay, so let me, so if I'm plugging, if I am dividing in negative two to this quad, this um, polynomial, I have one, these are my coefficients. Whoops, uh, sorry, re let me just fix that one, sorry about that. Um, it's a one, um, 1, negative 8. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay, so let's bring down our 1. Okay, and we're going to multiply. We're going to add. We're going to multiply. We're going to add. We're going to multiply, and then we're going to add. So there's my remainder of 0. So I know that so far my function looks like this. Okay, negative 2 went, is a 0, which means x plus 2 is a root. And what I have left here is, here's my coefficients, so that's a 1x squared minus x minus 6. All right, so again, we already know that one possible 0 is that, so we have zeros at negative 2, and we're looking for the other 2. So I turn my focus to right here, and I try to either factor or use quadratic formula to find my remaining zeros. Okay, so if you keep factoring, I think that one factors into x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay, so from here, this one gives me an x equals negative 2 as a root. This one gives me an x equals 3 as a root. And this one gives me x equals negative 2 as a root. So I did get 3, but I only actually have two unique ones. So here's my zeros. Okay, this what here, what happened here and here, this is what we call um, a multiplicity of two. Okay, so that root happened twice, which tells us something about the graph. It means when I graph this parabola, or sorry, not parabola, this cubic, at negative 2, it doesn't go through the x-axis, 
it actually comes and touches it and then turns changes direction there. So let's just give a little um, sketch. Whoops, let me get rid of this one. Just ignore this one for now. I don't know if I can erase it. No. So I'm just going to actually draw a line through it because I want to just actually graph this one before we move on to anything else. Okay, so that we're going to take the one that we just had this f of x, I'm going to put it in factored form. It was x plus 2, x minus 3, and x plus 2. So let me show you what happens with those roots. Okay, so what it means that at negative 2, so here's one zero, and here's another one. We know that this one um, because there's a 1x to the third, we know that this one should start down in the kind of left quadrant. It's going to, I think this one, just checking, had a y-intercept. If I plugged in a 0 for x, it had a y-intercept of negative 12. That original one had a negative 12. So just kind of, I don't have enough room to do all of that, but we're just getting a little sketch here. So this one would have to come up. It's got to come up from this direction. It's not going to go through that one. It's going to turn, change directions there because that route happened twice. Then it will come down. I don't have, just pretend like it had enough room to hit negative 12. And then it will come back up and through the graph at x equals 3 because this one, this route only happened once. And this root happened twice. And that's why those roots look different. One, it goes through, and one, it changes direction there. OK, so this one, I don't want to make your, this video too long for you. So the one that I scratched out up there, I'll try to make another video to show you. That was just an example that didn't have all real roots, Okay, that had one real and two imaginary. So I hope these two examples help you um, in these sections, finding all the um, real and imaginary zeros for a polynomial.